you can remain seated for just a moment. I've got a burden on my heart here tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost. And I feel like he's going to help us in this house. I've asked Brother Barry to play a little clip here. And I want you to watch this little video. And I feel like there's some people that can relate to what's happening in this video here tonight. Is there anybody that can relate? Have you found that life has cast you overboard? I'm going to be reading from three places. You can stand very quickly. 1 Timothy chapter 1 in verse number 19. And then I'll be going to 2 Corinthians 11 and 25 and then Acts chapter number 27 and 44. 1 Timothy 1 and 19. Holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck. Have made shipwreck. 2 Corinthians chapter number 11 and verse number 25. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. And thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. Acts 27 and verse 44. And the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. They escaped all safe to land. And may the Lord bless the reading of his word here tonight. You may be seated. I don't know about you, but sometimes life can deal you some unexpected blows. In our text here tonight, we find where Paul is, he writes to Timothy and he names two different men that cast their faith away and they made it shipwreck. They didn't think enough of their faith. They, some having put away concerning faith, having made shipwreck. There are people that have brought havoc and heartache on their life due to the choices that they have made. They did it with intentional thoughts and actions and deeds. Some people have shipwrecked their faith. They went against the leading of the Spirit and the preaching of God's Word and they were wanted to do it their way. They was like the Frank Sinatra song, I did it my way. 
lot of people like the old Burger King jingle. Hold the pickles, hold the lettuce, special orders don't upset us. All that we ask is let you serve it your way, have it your way, have it your way, have it your way at Burger King. Anybody remember that? Remember that jingle? Now, that's before some of you's time now. That's the way a lot of people, they want to do it their way. Well, God will let you do it your way if you want to do it your way. And so some people are reaping the consequences of the choices that they made in their life. And it brought about shipwreck. But then there's sometimes that there are those that it wasn't by their intent. It wasn't by their choice. It was just life made the choice for them. I might have said it here, but sometimes you make life's choices, then sometimes life makes those choices for you. And because of that, sometimes you and I will face shipwreck. Can you say amen? We will face shipwreck, and sometimes life throws us overboard. If the Lord would help me for just a short while, I want to preach on salvaging faith that has been shipwrecked. Salvaging faith that has been shipwrecked. I don't know about you, but there's been times that my faith, I know the preacher preached to us so wonderfully during the revival about that mustard seed faith and asking God whatsoever that we would and he would do for us. And I understand all that, but sometimes my faith has, uh, I'm not going to say it let me down, but life has put me in a precarious situation where I was disappointed. Now, I know some of you are walking, talking, squawking Jesus machines, and you're already getting your mail in heaven, but I'm not. I'm not getting my mail there. I, I get it at 10131 Crate Marble Road, Grand Bay, Alabama, and sometimes I wonder if God knows where I live at. Can anybody relate here with me? That's where sometimes, and sometimes because of what life has done to us or has happened in our, our lives, we find ourselves in a place of shipwreck. I mean, when everything that matters to us is torn apart and, and we see the sails of our life just ripped into shreds before our very eyes and you hear the sounds of board splittings and you saw and you see your life being destroyed by a storm that you didn't ask for. I've been going through the book of Job, but as of late, and I, I, I like technology. That man reads to me as I go to work every morning. I, I can hit my phone, and my phone connects with my truck, and out of them speakers comes God's Word. Isn't that amazing? And I've been listening to the book of Job. Job said, that thing that I greatly feared is to come upon me. And he said, man that is born a woman is but a few days and full of trouble. I don't know about you, but there's some of us that are facing things that we didn't ask for. I don't know about you, but I don't go around asking the devil. I don't get up in the morning and say, all right, devil, here's a good day for me and you to battle. <clears throat> there's one thing I, 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 me and the devil agree on. I hate him and he hates me. Yeah. But I, I'm not one of these. I don't intentionally... And I know that you and I, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I, I understand the concept of all that. But I, I, I don't go around picking a fight with the devil. Now you may do that, Brother Tim. I, I got enough to contend with. I believe it might be the devil that I'm contending. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. You know, and, and so we're, we're, we're in this place sometimes that life has, has brought about a shipwreck and we wonder what are we going to do? And we find ourselves in such a place at this. I mean, faith, that which is are the very basis of my Christian experience. Faith, it's a nail in a sure place. I know that great reformer uh, Martin Luther said, the just must live by faith. But what happens when, when we are faced in our ship of life is wrecked because of things that happen and transpire in our life? I wonder what you and I will do. I mean, we all here, we know the stories of the of shipwrecks, the Titanic and, and, and different ships that, that, that go down in life, but 
I'm talking about us here tonight. I must admit there have been times in my life, in my experience of faith, I have faced the unknown. I've been broadsided by the unseen. And I have wrestled with the uncontrollable. And the result is shipwreck. The result is shipwreck. What happens when my faith is shattered? Some of you can relate. That which you did not know, that which you did not see, that which you could not control, it has caused your faith to be shipwrecked. It was, it's not like those in our text that overrode their conscience. This was out of the blue. You didn't see it coming, something like never before. And it causes our faith to be shattered. Oh, God, help us here tonight. David, in his haste to get the ark back to Jerusalem, he puts that ark on a, on a new cart. You know, there's a lot of folks that's going to fall on David, but David's desire was to get that ark back to Jerusalem as quick as possible. I'm not going to fall on a man for trying. You know, we got these, we got these people that sit in the pews. They tell the preacher how to do his job. Hello? Now, this is my home church here now. And I'm going to do everything in my power to prop up and help this pastor here. I'm not a novice. I've been preaching for about 29 years now. So I got a little of it under my belt. I pastored a church where I had two deacons. They, they told me what they thought I should do. Well, it just hit, struck me the wrong way, Brother Jason. I wasn't as spiritual as I should have been at that moment. But I pushed my chair back from my desk and I told that, that, uh, that deacon, I said, you need to come and sit in this chair and see all that I'm seeing. Then you can tell me how you think I can do it. He said, brother, I don't believe I can do that. Hello? We got a lot of folks that they can tell you how to, how to do things. But until you're, they're faced with what you're facing and, and, and looking out the same windows that you're looking out of and, and walking in the same shoes that you're walking in. Come on here now. Oh, oh God, help me. Well, I, if, if it was me, I'd tell you what I would do. You better be glad you're not facing what some are facing here tonight. Oh, hallelujah, you better be glad that you're not going through what they're going through. So, so David, in his haste, he puts that, that ark on that, that new card and he tries to get it back to uh, Jerusalem just as fast as he could. And you, you know the story of what happens. And, and because that, that, that Uzzah, he was not a priest of the Lord, he reaches out and touches that ark. Now, I know there's been those that have gave Uzzah down the road. But he didn't want the ark to fall either. But every one of us have our place. Hello? Do I, do I need to plow that row a little bit? Everybody's got their place. And because of this, David was displeased. That's what the Bible says. David was displeased. Now that means dissatisfied. Now, if you'd be honest with me here tonight, how many of you have ever been displeased with the Lord? I got one honest, this altar's open right now. We're going to just go ahead and get an altar call. There's been times every one of us when we have done our best and we have tried our hardest and then life did not go like we expected it, and things did not turn out like we wanted to and, and God seems to have let us down and we are displeased and our faith is shattered because of that. I mean, I was trying my best but the unknown, the unseen, the uncontrollable, oh God, help us here tonight. Sometimes our faith is shattered. I am a control freak. If you don't believe it, ask my wife. I want to put my finger on the pulse of what's going on in my life. Huh? 
I want to know. And when things around me become unstable and unsure and I'm fighting enemies that I don't know and I'm being attacked from this side and that side and it's the unseen and the uncontrollable. I'm faced with all of that. Oh, it, it causes my faith to be, be weak. Come on here now. I'm trying to relate to somebody in this house. I'm going to be as honest with you as I can. I'm not some preacher that ain't never walked through. Hey, listen. Hey, I can tell you, I have been there with, words, with what, what some of you are facing here tonight. And so because of me being a control freak, I want to know what's going on. You know, I, I finally, being in business, I've had to, you know, you micromanage yourself to death. I've had to I'm hire somebody to do a job. Well, you know, since me doing the job for him, my wife, she'll come in my office, Brother John, and she'll say, uh, what are you going to do about this? I said, well, don't we have a secretary? And don't we have a shop foreman? No, we have a yard hand. I've, I've had to learn. There's some things old Shannon can't do. And I'm going to tell you what, in life, listen to me now, you'll worry yourself sick. That's it. And when your faith is shattered, That's it. come on here now. David was displeased because of this and often when we find ourselves in this place where our faith is shattered our faith becomes skeptical our faith becomes skeptical that which holds you no longer holds you because you become pessimistic and distrustful and uh, hands are thrown up and towels are thrown in uh, Times like this is is hard to do, and, and and we're often like Peter. We follow God at a distance. Oh, but it's times like this when we need God more than ever. It's easy for us to be cold and callous and skeptical, and we become suspicious. Not every church member is a bad church member, Brother Tim. Boy, I feel the Holy Ghost right here. Not everybody's going to disappoint you. Not everybody's going to let you down. There's still some people that's in your corner. Huh? There's still some people that's got your back. They may not say much, but they're there for you. Oh, God, help me here tonight. <laughs> I'm preaching salvaging faith that has been in a shipwreck. And it's easy for us, Brother Mark, when we're in this condition and we're in this situation, we become cold and callous because we feel like nobody cares. But I want to tell you here tonight, oh, wherefore we see such a great a cloud of witnesses. I want to tell you, somebody's in heaven telling you, you can go on, you can make it, you can follow on. Hey, listen, God's never failed you. God's never let you down. And God's not going to do it tonight. Can you say amen? Oh, it's easy for us to become skeptical. Oh, God help me. And because of that, we become suspicious. I can't tell you where I've been for the last 18 months. But God knows. And I'm glad to be here. Oh, Holy Ghost. I cannot call affliction sweet, yet t'was good for me to bear. 
for affliction brought me to thy feet and I have found comfort there. Hallelujah. I may not understand what God's doing, but I do know this, that God's got my best interest at heart. I want to tell you here tonight, the road that you, you had to walk down to get here, you may not understand why God deemed it necessary for you to walk that road, but I want to tell you, his ways are not our ways, and his thoughts, that are not our thoughts, but I know the thoughts that I think toward thee, said the Lord, his thoughts of peace and not of evil. God wants to bring you out. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Let's lift our hands all over this house. Oh, oh God. I've been lied on. I've been mistreated. Oh. And so because of that, your, your, your struggle and your trial and that you're, that you're facing will do one or two things. It will draw you closer to God or it will drive you away from God. It's all about reaction. Huh? It's how you react. Now I want to tell you what, when you're tossed overboard into the sea, there's no buoyancy in finger pointing. Did you hear what I said? Finger pointing or blame pudding. It ain't going to cause you to float. But I want to tell you what. Did you see that little video we played? That man was trying his very best to get to the top of that water. You're here tonight, and the devil has caused your faith to be shattered. And he's caused your faith to be skeptical. But you know what the Holy Ghost is saying? Your faith can be salvaged. You're looking at what the devil has taken away from you. You're looking at what is gone. Do you hear what I said? You're looking at what the devil has taken away. You're looking at what you lost. Boy, I feel the Holy Ghost right here. You're looking at what you lost. You've watched all your hopes and your aspirations, your dreams, and your desires, and now you're facing a setback. Brother Mark, God knew about them termites before they ever started gnawing on that wall. Huh? That little spare that you found in your house today, that's one of God's little old birds. If he's mindful of that little old spare, He's mindful of you. Oh, I'm, I'm trying to help. You're looking at what the storm has taken away from you. You're looking at what the storm has cost you. But notice our text in the book of Acts. And the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. The most important thing for you now is survival. The most important thing for you now is survival. Hallelujah. You got family that's dependent on you. What are you going to do? They find themselves in a sea. And they look at all that they've lost. And that's where some of you are here tonight. You're looking at all that you've lost. 
but God wants you to look at what's left. Oh, Holy Ghost. <laughs> You're looking at what you lost, but God wants you to look around at what's left. And some on board, and some on broken peace. I want to tell somebody here by the authority of the Holy Ghost that God left enough to save you. The storm wanted to take you out, but God said, I'm going to make sure there's enough to save them. <laughs> Hallelujah. I wish somebody would just get that here tonight. That, hey, you may not have, but just a board of faith left. But I want to tell you, broken faith is better than no faith at all. Can you say amen? Hey, if all I've got, God has left enough to sustain me. I want to shout it here tonight and tell somebody that God is looking out for you. That God is on the throne. And Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Come on. I'm trying to help somebody here tonight. God has left enough to sustain you. Oh, don't focus on what you lost. Focus on what's left. And some on boards. And some on broken pieces of the ship. Oh, Holy Ghost. Come on here now. This is where you're at. In that sea. You watch your ship go down. All these years I've been serving the Lord. Uh, don't get cold. Don't get callous. He knoweth the way that I take, and when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I'm trying to tell somebody here tonight, you need to grab on what's left. You need to grab onto what's left. Praise the whole, praise God. You need to grab a hold of what's left here tonight. You'd be surprised just how strong it is. You'd be surprised. He said, if you had faith as a grain of a mustard seed, I want to tell somebody, hey, God left you enough to save you here tonight. Oh, there is faith that can be salvaged. Oh, Holy Ghost, I feel God in this house tonight. Let's stand on this house. Let's stand here tonight. God has left enough to save you.